Hello everybody, this is Mr. Lu. Yesterday we have a very interesting topic about my discovery that Singapore is such an expensive place to live in. Um, and I've got a few hundred comments uh, written at me and many of you gave ideas of how to lower the cost of living in Singapore. So today I will bring up some of the interesting ideas and let's discuss them. And uh, I'll appreciate if you were to give a like, not just for myself, and also for those people who courageously bring out some constructive ideas of how to lower the cost of living for Singapore. Okay, so uh, we appreciate you hit a like and uh, subscribe and let's uh, get going. Okay, all right. So uh, the first and most uh, drastic idea is uh, let's vote PAP out, right? That's, uh, that's, that's, that's a very uh, anti-government kind of uh, position. And the idea is that by voting PAP out, you know, you bring in a new government, maybe Workers' Party, maybe PSP, and they'll be able to bring the cost of living down, right? That's the, that's the hope of it. Um, my take uh, about this is that, you now it's very easy to say, you know, blame the government and, uh, and vote them out and then the cost of living problem will go away. I don't think it's so simple. I don't think it's so simple. Uh, at least I can see the government now actively doing what they can to lower the cost of living. And, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of uh, initiative to bring down cost of living. Now, whether they are effective, effective or not, uh, is a different matter. Uh, whether they have uh, yield results or not, that's a different matter. But at least I get some constructive action that is taken by our government that is uh, doing the job. Uh, as for the Workers' Party and the PSP, I don't see very constructive ideas were given by them. Um, and I, you know, certainly not going to bet that, you know, just just by voting uh, the old one out, the new one for sure have ideas or at least a chance, right? They can ruin the government, you know, and uh, ruin all we have built. So I think the risk is very high and it's very, um, it's very easy and slipshod just to say that, you no know, vote the government out, you know, the new one come in and bring, bring down all the costs. Uh, I don't think uh, that's, a, that's a very wise move. I, I would, I'm very against uh, such an idea. Rather, I think it's more constructive to give ideas you know, to our government how to reduce the cost of living uh, than to just you know, say, no, it's the government's fault, let's bring them down, that kind of thing, right? So this is point number one. The, the next area I want to talk about that is more helpful is the discussion between um, on this area of medicine, right? Uh, a lot of uh, people suggested that uh, you should go and get generic medicine instead of branded medicine. I think this is a this is a a practical way of solving the problem. Uh, generic medicine are at a fraction of the cost. You can get them at polyclinic, and then get them at uh, our government hospitals as well. Uh, they are widely available, and uh, the branded medicine, you know, it's uh, really expensive. Um, I won't go into a debate whether generics and branded are better. I called my doctor friends. Some of them say that branded clearly there's a difference. Some of them say that generics are about the same, you know, the kind of thing. So no, no right or wrong to this. I prefer that it comes to medicine. I will take the branded one. Okay. Uh, I, when my life is in concern, my health is concerned, you know, you know, I would rather pick the best. Okay. Uh, I, just like, uh, you know, uh, you would, you wouldn't pick, uh, <laughs> if you, you wouldn't pick a, um, uh, the cheapest doctor, right? You know, you pick the best doctor. When it comes to health, I think I'll pick the best medicine. Uh, but unfortunately, best medicine it costs a lot in Singapore. Now, so this is the one that I always encourage people to consider. You know, go to JB, for example. I'm, I'm sure the same in KL and maybe in Malacca as well. You know, you can buy some of this, uh, sorry, some of this branded medicine over the counter. You don't even need a prescription, right? They, they are very uh, easy to, uh, to, to settle this uh, over the counter. Uh, and you know some some people ask me to go go to uh, JB to buy the generics. You know if I'm in JB, why would I still buy the generic for what? You know when the, it's only a fraction of cost. Uh, Crestor costs about eighty dollars in Singapore. Costs about I don't know fifteen dollars or so in uh, in uh, JB. You know why do I still go and buy a generic? Maybe cost half the price of the branded. Anyway, my point is that I think uh, I think that there's no there's no argument that. Now, an area for our health science authority or our government uh, agency to consider is, I think currently there's a limit that you cannot buy more than three months supply okay, from overseas. But why three months? Right? Why three months? Why the magic three months, right? Okay, Why not six months? Why not 12 months? Why not nine months? You know, I, I think we can afford, you know, as long as you buy them from, uh, from credible sources, you know, it's for self-consumption, you know, why not buy a lot more, right? I saw this uh, medicine... 
uh, validity is for you know, for years, right? One or two years or three years, you know. So why not allow them to be bought in bigger amounts for your own consumption, right? So, um, and on this note, why don't we allow parallel import for medicine, okay? And uh, this, uh, this, clearly, these drug companies are fleecing the hell of us uh, with these uh, kind of sky-high prices. I don't think the government uh, wants this to happen. Why don't we allow parallel import now? Someone argued that, oh, you know, it's because of health, health, health science authority or you know, Ministry of Health or whatever wants uh, to control, to make sure that we get the best, don't get some... Uh, get some um, you know, rubbish, uh, you know, uh, parallel importer bring some uh, fake medicine, things like that. Well, so why not we just license the parallel importers? Uh, license them, right? Control them, restrict it to 10, you know, 20 of them, but make sure that they fulfill certain criteria. We, we, we control all these parallel importers strictly, right? Now, with this, we can bring down the cost of medicine, right? And and that will, that will compete uh, with, the, with the brands and, you know, stop this... Uh, this uh this 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 drug companies from fleecing us Singaporeans, right? So I think that's the food for thought. You know, some constructive ideas that are given uh, by by many of us. I think it's quite interesting, right? Now on the topic of uh, COE, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of you blame the PHV, the private hire vehicles, uh, for for the COE prices, right? And and uh, I, I, I cannot ascertain uh, how truth is because I'm not in the industry. I'm, my familiarity with the COE industry is uh, not very high. But, you know, uh, I think currently right now, if you if you, if you you uh, are getting a car uh, as a Grab driver, you know, uh, versus a get a car for yourself, I think you beat the same class of COE. Uh, I think it makes sense uh, for the... The, the transport ministry to consider right now why don't we have a, a two class of coe one for private owned and one for one for uh, for 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 grab uh, you know, use or things like that right so i think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, you know logic to that uh, i think it's a uh, then you separate the demand separately uh, a lot of people say that you know but you know uh, you know you know what one of the ways is that you know there are different uh, right hailing companies you know car hailing companies right now today you know you have a few companies you know actually uh, you know if you bid you if you if you want to bid for different car uh, different car companies at different time the price is different uh, someone suggested why don't we we you know we force all these company uh, to create an API and uh, and create a, a a central app to bid across all these companies right let's say you bid you know you see which company is cheaper like Amazon like that you know, today you want to buy something and they'll list all the comp uh, competing prices of different companies. Right? Why don't we have something like that? I think it's a good idea, okay? And this will force competition to bring down prices. Um, you know, I, I think it's a great idea. Instead of today, you know, when I want to bid, uh, when I get want to get a vehicle, I will bid companies by companies and companies to see which one is cheaper, right? So it's uh, troublesome. I think it's a great idea, okay? Um, uh, then, of course, the big question is, you know, why do you even need a car, right? Go get a, go right, take the MRT, go take the buses or things like that, right? So it's a, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot cheaper if you go by all this, right? Um, I, I think there are reasons why you need a car. There are sometimes reasons why you need a Grab and there's a reason why sometimes MRT and buses are better. Uh, I think it's not, it's very sweeping to say that uh, in the public transport, uh, uh, is enough or you no? Know, if it's enough, you no? Know, why do all the ministers drive? You know, if it's enough, you tell all the all the head of uh head of the transport uh, uh transport department all go and uh, take public transport now. Nah. I'm sure some of them do, but uh, I'm sure all of them own a car, right? There's a reason the car brings a lot a lot of comfort, car brings a lot of convenience and so on, right? So um, car ownership is still highly coveted, coveted, right? So, um. Let's hope that some of these ideas, you know, can uh, can be considered, you know, uh, by the by the government agencies to help uh, to bring down the cost of uh, COE, and bring down the cost of uh, of public transport uh, or private hires, right? So anyway, uh, let's talk about the most uh, most you know uh, controversial one, right? Which is property, 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 right? Um, I think let's come to acceptance that yes. BTO prices, if you get a non-mature estate somewhere out there, a bit far away from a city or things like that, you can get it at fairly affordable prices. That, that is true, right? 
Uh, and you know, if you want to have the Prime and Plus one, you know, and that comes with a lot more restriction and uh, inconvenience right now, man, prices uh, will probably be still expensive and blah, blah, right? Um, let's accept the fact that the price to pay for the for the outskirt non-mature HDB estates uh, is in terms of location, traveling time, and also waiting time as well, right? So all this comes in. Uh, it's not that they are affordable, right? They're unaffordable in other areas, you know. It's not just, it's affordable in price, but unaffordable in other areas. Um, so some people actually say that the whole problem is right now, the whole property market is so expensive. Why do we even allow multiple ownership of, uh, of property, right? So at the extreme, some people are suggesting that why not restrict ownership to just one per family, right? Why do you need two houses to stay? You Houses is in land scarce Singapore should only for home ownership and not for investments, right? Because ownership should come first. Investment, there are a lot of other, there are a lot of other places to invest, right? From CPF to bonds to shares to whatever. Why must uh, property be allowed uh, for, 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 for investments, right? So um, that's a very extreme view. Um, I can see why some people come up with this idea. Um, so uh, an in-between uh, idea would be, you know, okay, you know, you allow, you know, uh, people to buy two houses, but only in private houses, not public houses, right? So, uh, so you know, why do we allow HDB owners to own private, private houses, right? So these are arguments uh, that, you know, when you pull in all these restrictions, you know, you bring down the price uh, 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 drastically, right? Um, and... And I think uh, these are these are very drastic ideas. Uh, I can understand where they're coming from. I would support this idea, but I know that on the reverse, the government is very afraid of crashing the market prices, the market uh, property market as well. Because when you crash the property market, you spill over effect to the entire economy as well, right? So no easy answers to this. Bottom line is that if you have allowed prices go up to bring it down, has tremendous costs around. I think some level of calibration of restri increased restriction of ownership is required to soften the, the price of the, the houses, okay? I think there's some effect is happening already, um, but I think if you, if you want uh, houses to be, to be really affordable, some drastic actions such as this uh, that are suggested by some of you guys, uh, you know, uh, we will certainly lower price, but I'm not too sure about the cost uh, implication uh, throughout, throughout the whole economy, right? A lot of people who owns uh, two houses and three houses will be very angry at me even to voice this out on behalf of you. Uh, but but it shows how emotional this topic is, right? No. So I think increased restriction of home ownership is required, okay? How restrictive it is, you know, we have got some ideas here, you know, for for uh, food for thought, okay? So so let's take a step back, okay? Let's take a back, step back. I, I think these are interesting ideas that came out from all of you. Uh, I, I think uh, some of the audience here might be from the right ministries to think about this. Uh, some of them are, are, are very extreme. Some of them are, are, are partially practical. Some of them are fully practical. So think about this. I think these are great ideas in bringing costs of living down that we Singaporeans uh, are, you know, are seriously in need uh, of a, a, a quick fix to an inflation problem, right? So anyway... Food for thought, you know, if you think some of these ideas are good, you know, please sound off, give a like, okay? Uh, if these ideas are not as good, you want ideas to refine it, you know? Uh, please, uh, please come up with good ideas, you know, I will take your ideas uh, up and, uh, and, uh, and, and further refine it, uh, you know? I'll, I'll, rather than just coming out to say, you know, Mr. Lu is stupid, Mr. Lu, you this, that, you this, that, you know? Not very constructive, you know? You know or vote the government C, you know, kind of thing, right? Not very constructive at all come up with constructive ideas and we can bring some ideas together, okay? Anyway, just uh, food for thought and uh, may you have a great, uh, great Sunday, uh, Sunday night and, uh, and, our, uh, and have a great week forward, you know, and uh, I'll see you uh, tomorrow, okay? See you and uh, goodbye.